Hi, my name is Ian Trevethan. I'm the Education and Outreach Director here at the Sternberg Museum of Natural History, and this is a new way to museum. When people come and visit our museum, often one of the first things you see is what's behind me. This is an exhibit or life model of a guy called George Sternberg. But did you know that there's actually more than one George Sternberg? But we're gonna come back to that. First, I need to ask you a, a big favor. And I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like this video. All right, let's go. So as I said, there's actually more than one George Sternberg. So today we're actually gonna sort of explore the beginnings of the Sternberg family here in Kansas, since this is where we're located. So the George Sternberg in question that we're gonna talk about is actually Dr. George Miller Sternberg. Now, George Miller Sternberg was born in New York in Otsego County, New York, and uh, went to medical school, became a doctor in about 1860, and about a year later, in 1861, the U.S. Civil War breaks out. And like most young men his age, he joined the Army and became a military surgeon. So Dr. Sternberg actually saw a lot of action in the first year of the Civil War. Uh, there are lots of stories. He, he was on some of the first major campaigns and was actually at one point captured by Confederates and then escaped capture and was able to rejoin his unit to defend the Capitol. So very, very interesting stuff. Unfortunately for George, and this is actually kind of an important thing in his trajectory as a doctor, uh, Dr. Sternberg caught um, typhoid. <laughs> and was taken behind the lines and spent the rest of the war uh, serving as a surgeon in a hospital uh, further east and north uh, away from the battle. Now, this may sound like a bummer uh, for a time when achieving glory was done on the battlefield, but for George Miller Sternberg, uh, this was an opportunity for him to, A, deal with a very personal blow, which was catching typhoid fever, and B, working towards solving the problem of transmitted disease. Uh, so actually during his time throughout the rest of the war, he actually received several promotions and accommodations for meritorious service while acting as a surgeon in these hospitals. And one of the things that he and his, his colleagues advocated uh, was better sterile uh, environments. So prior to this time, uh, you would get, and certainly out in the battlefield, you would get hospitals that either had a dirt or sort of a wood chip floor, uh, and all the surfaces were permeable. And George Sternberg and his contemporaries argued that all the surfaces in a hospital needed to be sealed uh, and act as a barrier for any sort of liquids or fluids that might fall into the floor. Uh, they discovered that that actually cut down on the transmission of diseases. So already we're starting to see development in uh, Sternberg's career regarding the transmission of diseases and eventually what would become known as the field of bacteriology. So as the Civil War came to an end in 1865, Dr. Sternberg decided to remain in the military and shortly after was actually transferred to the West. Uh, first at, at Fort uh, Riley, uh, at what is now the sort of Kansas border, and eventually uh, in about 1866, he was transferred to Fort Harker, what is in what we now know as Canopolis, Kansas in Ellsworth County. And it was at Fort Harker that he really sort of began his, his career trajectory. And this is between uh, both tragedy and some pretty momentous discoveries. So let's talk about that. So shortly after George was stationed at Fort Harker, uh, he asked his young wife Louisa to come and join him in about 1867. And shortly after she joined him at the fort, um, there was an outbreak of cholera. Cholera was a real problem in the late 1860s uh, and you know, in the Western frontier. Uh, unfortunately, uh, along with about 75 other members of that military community, uh, George lost his wife to cholera. Uh, and 
one would imagine he was pretty upset with that. And uh, I think that really sort of started him on this journey to combat uh, uh, diseases that were passed through uh, one individual to another. Uh, and it was during this time that he began to really take an interest in what causes people to get sick. Uh, and according to uh, the records at Fort Harker, it was, it was Dr. Sternberg that made the recommendation that they relocate the, the animal stockyards away from their water source. As it turned out, their water source was a river and the runoff from the stockyards was going into their water source, which was upstream. So as they were grabbing their water to put in their cistern, which is like a well, uh, they were actually putting contaminated water into their cistern that was coming from the stockyards. So on Dr. Sternberg's recommendation, they removed the stockyards further away from their water source, and that seemed to have helped the situation with cholera. So one of the most interesting things about Fort Surgeons on the uh, Great Plains of Kansas in the late 1860s is not only were their duties to take care of the people at the fort uh, in a medical sense, but doctors of the time were one of the only people in these areas that had any sort of uh, training in naturalism. Uh, that would be, you know, chemistry, that would be geology, that would be botany. Uh, they understood uh, anatomy to some degree. So um, logically, it was the fort surgeons that also became sort of the fort naturalists. And after they discharged their medical duties uh, and took care of the, the soldiers on, on base, uh, it was their secondary duty to go out and collect information about the surrounding area. So this would include plants and animals and uh, geological resources, and in the case of Kansas, fossil resources. So George Miller Sternberg is actually credited with finding some of the first fossils from the Dakota sandstone, from the Smoky Hills chalk, and from the Pierce Shale. Shale. And even though he never formally published on uh, the fossils that he discovered uh, and, and described, um, it's evident from his personal communication uh, and, and writings that he was very interested in the fossil resources of this area and went out of his way to make sure that they were properly stored and collected and properly researched back at the Smithsonian. So, Really, I think the credit of some of the very first fossil discoveries in our area of Kansas goes to Dr. George Miller Sternberg. So during Dr. Sternberg's time in Ellsworth County, Kansas, uh, while he was stationed at Fort Harker, he actually purchased a, a plot of land and brought the rest of his family, uh, his father and several of his brothers and sisters, out to uh, this area of Kansas where they established a ranch. Eventually, Dr. Sternberg was transferred away from Kansas, uh, but he continued to come and visit and uh, continued to be part of his family's ranch. Uh, you can see a lot in Charles, his brother Charles Sternberg's writings that often uh, George was at home visiting and checking in on his family. But he did go on to uh, excel in his career, he became uh, what was equivalent today as Surgeon General. Uh, during World War I, he took on yellow fever and did his best to eradicate the causes of yellow fever. Uh, he went on to establish the American Medical Association, and up on his retirement, he dedicated his life to charity. So uh, Dr. Sternberg was a uh, very, very valuable figure in terms of biological sciences as well as a really good template to follow for uh, your life's goals. So I hope you found this talk uh, informative. We'll continue on about the Sternberg legacy in some of our upcoming episodes. Thank you for tuning in to A New Way to Museum. I'm Ian Trevethan, and we'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us in A New Way to Museum with the Sternberg Museum of Natural History. If you enjoyed this video, like it and subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell for notifications when we release a new video. Support us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. You can also follow us on all our social media. Links are found in the description. Thanks for watching, 
and follow your curiosity to new discoveries.